Thank you devotees from Los Angeles. Seattle would like to add to this 143rd Jayanti celebrations by doing chantings, bhajan and readings. Manjaha 
ಅಚಲ ಮನಡಮಿಡು ನರುಣ ಮಲೆಯೇನು ಮೆಲೆಯರು ಮರುಳೊಳಿ ಕಡಲೆ ಕಡಲೆಯೂ ಎಲ್ಲಿಯ ಕೊರಿತರು ನೀರ್ದ ಕಡಲಿಲ್ಲ ಎಡೈವರಿ ಕಡಸಿ ನಿಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡಲು ಇರುಣಿಲೆಲು ಮುಣೆಯುರುವರೆಯಲ್ ಊರ ಪಲ ಮಳೆಗಳಿಲುಳಲಿನು ನಿಲ್ಲ ಇಡವೆಲಿ ಅಲೆಯೇನು ನಿಲ್ಲಯಲಿ ಪುಲ್ಲು ಇಡ ನಿಲ ಮಲದಿಲೈ ಬರುವಲಿ ಚೆಲ್ಲ ಕಡನು ಇರುವರುವಳಿ ಸೆನ್ರಿಡೆಯಿಂದ ಕಡಲು ನೈ ಮರುವಿಡು ಮರುಣ ಬುಧರಣೆ Ah, it stands quietly as if an insentient hill. Its action is mysterious, difficult for anyone to understand. From knowledgeless early childhood, Arunachala was shining in my mind as that which is most great. Even when I came to know through someone that it was Thiruvanna Malai, I did not realize the truth of it. When having enchanted my mind, it drew me near. then i came near and saw it to be a hill when i scrutinized within the mind who is the seer the seer became non existent and i saw that which remained the mind does not rise to say i saw how can the mind rise to say i did not see who has the power to reveal this by speaking when in ancient times you revealed it only without speaking only to reveal your state without speaking you stood shining as a hill rising from earth to sky when i approached thinking of you as a form you stand as a hill on earth if one thinks of your form as formless one is like someone who wanders about the world in order to see the sky therefore instead of trying to meditate upon you thus when without thinking one thinks of your real form one separate individuality will cease to exist like a sugar form placed in the ocean when i know myself what else is my form but you you who were existing as the great aruna hill alone are and i the separate individual am not see leaving you who exist and shine and seeking god is only like taking a light seeking darkness only to reveal yourself who exist and shine you exist as various forms in each and every religion if people do not know you who exist and shine as i am they are only like the blind who do not have knowledge of the sun o gem call the peerless great aruna hill exist and shine in my heart as one without a second like the string in a garland of gems you alone exist as the one in each and every soul and in each and every one of the diverse religions just as a gem is polished on a grinding stone if the mind is polished on the stone called mind so as to remove its flaws the light of your grace will shine forth just as the light of a gem the attachment towards any other object will not approach when the light of the sun falls on a photographic plate can an image be impressed upon it when the light of arunachala falls upon the mind no image can thereafter be impressed upon it other than you the intensely lustrous aruna hill is there anything or whose light can thereafter make an impression upon it you the heart the light of consciousness the one reality alone exist a wonderful power shakti exist in you as not other than you from series of subtle shadowy thoughts by means of consciousness in the world of destiny are seen as shadowy world pictures both inside the mirror of thought light and outside through the five senses just like a cinema picture which exists through a lens 
O hill of grace, whether they stop appearing or whether they continue appearing, they do not exist apart from you. If the thought I does not exist, no other thing will exist. Until that, if other thoughts rise, one should inquire, to whom do they rise? To me? Then by scrutinizing what is the rising place of I, merge within. Diving within, if one reaches the heart throne, one will become verily the sovereign under the shade of one umbrella. Since the thought I will then not exist, the dream known as inside and outside, the two karmas, death and birth, pleasure and pain, and darkness and light will not exist. And the limitless ocean of the light of grace called Aruna Hill, which dances motionlessly in the coat of the heart in the form of Spurna, I, I, alone will exist. The water showered by the clouds which rose from the ocean will not stop even if obstructed until it reaches its abode, the ocean. Similarly, the embodied soul which rises as I am this body rises from you, O Arunachala, and will not stop though it wanders on the many paths which it encounters until it unites with you. Though it wanders about the vast sky, there is not a boat for the bird. The place for the bird to rest is not other than the earth. Therefore, what it is bound to do is to go back the way it came. O Arunachala Hill, when the soul goes back the way it came, it will unite with you, the ocean of bliss. Namah Parvati Pataye Hara Hara Namah Parvati Pataye Hara Hara Mahadeva, 
Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya The following excerpt is taken from the book The Secret of Liberation by Sri Swami Vidya Prakashananda Giri. Greatness of the Good People O Paramatman, the Infinite, bless me with the company of Mahatmas who are devoted and pure-hearted. In their company, I will become intoxicated drinking the praise of your qualities, sports and stories. I will also cross easily the ocean of samsara, which is full of sorrows and fears. Bhagavatam, 4th Skanda, 9th Chapter, 11th Verse When Dhruva was doing intense penance in the Madhu forest to realize God, the God was pleased and appeared before him. With his heart filled with the extreme joy, Dhruva sang the above-mentioned verse. 
Bless me with the company of those Mahatmas who are ever devoted to you, said Dhruva to Lord Vishnu. For those desiring company of good people is very essential. The company of bad people, on the other hand, will throw Jiva into hell. For one immersed in enjoying worldly pleasures, progress in the efforts to realize God can never come. Not only that, it will gradually decrease. Instances are there revealing that many seekers, even after getting some progress in spirituality, fell into sense pleasures due to the company of bad and worldly people. In the play chart of steps to reach the top place, even after climbing several ladders, if the coin falls in the mouth of a big snake, it comes to the bottom and the player loses his game. So, the company of good people is essential for the seekers, says the scripture. Dhruva was able to gain the way to realize God due to the company of sage Narada. Due to the company of seven sages only, Ratnakara was able to get the mantra Ram to cross the ocean of Samsara. Due to the company of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa only, Sri Vivekananda was able to realize the Supreme. Like this, so many made their lives blessed by purifying their minds with the company of good people. That is why Dhruva prayed to God to bless him with the company of such Mahatmas in whose hearts devotion to God would be flowing, whose minds would be pure without any blemishes and sense pleasures. In their company, the benefit of hearing stories about God, chanting of God's name will come. A seeker should spend his life in spiritual practice only. The bee that sucks sweet honey from the mandara flower, will it ever go into a forest with the scorched trees full of thorns? Similarly, those devotees with their minds drenched in the nectar of God's qualities will never desire for sense pleasures which cause great sorrows of samsara. That is why Dhruva said to God, Having mind intoxicated with the nectar of hearing your stories, I will not desire the ocean of samsara full of great sorrow. By this, it becomes clear that only those people who do not know the experiences about God, supreme peace and happiness of Nirvana will run after sense pleasures, but those who know them do not. One who has seen the original will not crave for the image. One who craves for the mirage will not get any water. He is an ignorant person only. The existence of the world and the sense pleasures is momentary. There is no permanence for them. If some peace and comfort are seen, they are followed by sorrow. That is why Sri Krishna has described this world in the Gita as samsara of death. However great may be a thing and however beautiful it may be, if it is of transient nature, there will be no value for it. The lost body can never can be taken as the best example. Though it is very beautiful as it is taken away by death, Mahatmas don't give any importance to it. They will not be pleased by its strength and beauty thinking that it is not permanent and they become detached with it. Therefore, the wise following the peaceful and liberating divine path, rendering service to God without getting drowned in the pleasures of visible worldly objects, enjoying the happiness of chanting God's name, becoming worthy of God's grace, should dedicate their lives to acquire liberation like Dhruva. If devotion is developed well, then the knowledge will occupy the heart of its own accord. If one chants the mantra Dasoham, then the thought Soham will arise gradually. Surrender to God Among the householder devotees of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Naga Mahaseya was an important one. Among the mendicant disciples, Vivekananda was a great one. Nagamahasaya was a great devotee, while Vivekananda was a jnani. One was a follower of the path Dasoham, and the other was a follower of the path of Soham. A scholar observed both of them, and understanding their ways, said like this, The great chain of illusion tied both Nagamahasaya and Vivekananda, but Nagamahashaya, reducing his body thinner and thinner until it became so thin like an insect, escaped through the ring of that chain, while Vivekananda, increasing his body bigger and bigger, broke the chain itself into pieces. Like this, 
both freed themselves from the shackles of illusion. Nagamahasaya, destroying his ego by increasing his devotion, said, O oh God, I am the servant of your servants and their servants. Singing like this, making his mind's power lesser and lesser, one should merge it with God. Vivekananda, following the path of knowledge, said, This world is not separate from me in any way. It is created outwardly by illusion. How a thing appears in a mirror like that, this world is reflecting due to the illusion in my non-duality. There is only one Paramatman. I am such non-dual Paramatman in the form of Shiva. Singing aloud like this, making his mind vast, one becomes Paramatman in the end. So by all means, those two making their minds not became Atman only. The supreme goal of devotion knowledge is the same. In the examples of Naga Mahashaya and Vivekananda, only the principal ways have been explained, but that does not mean that there was no knowledge in Naga Mahashaya and devotion in Vivekananda. So, the seekers without falling into the logic of devotion versus knowledge should spend their time in the main effort of undergoing ethical training. When that is achieved, then everything is achieved. The essence of Gita is to acquire good character where purity of heart and mind lies. There Paramatman will be shining as well. So all the seekers with their efforts having firm determination, driving out all bad thoughts from their hearts, becoming worthy of God's love and compassion, can cross the ocean of samsara easily. Generally, people before entering a temple leave their footwear outside the entrance. This is a good practice. In the presence of God, pride, ego, pomp are useless. To tell this only, elders made such arrangements. One should near God with humility and obedience. At the sacrificial altar near the flag post of temple, one should sacrifice his pride, ego, arrogance, envy and go near God, near the God in the temple. Discarding self-esteem, thinking that he is smaller than a blade of grass, one should worship God thinking that he is a tree withstanding all the troubles, says elders. When a person puts his boot on grass, it bends, but it will not cause pain to the person. Praising its humility, Lord Brahma, the creator, blessed it with a place in the worship of God. So people are sacred, use sacred grass at the time of worship. A tree, as the weight of fruits increases, bends in humility. It will not become proud for having the fruits. When anyone throws stones at it, instead of retaliating, it offers fruits to that person. To do help to one who harm, harms it is a special quality of a tree. When inert grass and trees are so humble, then with what humility a conscious and wise person should act is to be considered. Whose head bows before God and elders, the head of the world bows before him. The world pays tribute to him. Contrary to this, one who disregards and neglects God and elders, the world also disregards and abhors him. The reason for Sri Krishna describing the worship of deities Brahmins and masters are a great penance in the Gita is that it is an essential good quality in the spiritual field. Though Anjaneya was so strong and wise, yet he always bowed his head before Sri Rama. He served with great devotion and humility. He had enormous strength and courage and carried a mountain in his palm. He made even huge demons to fall at his feet. Such a strong person he was. It is known to all that with how much devotion, obedience bowed his head, eyes filled with tears and served Sri Rama and elders. This instance in Ramayana shows clearly that the humility of Anjaneya. When Anjaneya burned down the city of Sri Lanka, wondering who was responsible for such destruction, the huge demons came to attack him. Anjaneya expanded his body like a mountain and seeing such a terrifying form, the demons were afraid and asked him who he was. For that, 
Anjaneya gave this good reply. O oh, demons, you are questioning who I am? I am the servant of servants of Sri Rama, the most magnificent and sacred person. My name is Hanumanta. I am the son of Vayu. I came here to kill. kill you, the enemies, like this creating fear and kin like this creating fear and kindling fire in the hearts of enemies and becoming invincible, he said about himself as a servant of servants of Sri Rama, but did not boast about himself. Such unusual humility, faith and obedience towards the master only brought fame to the character of Anjaneya. Therefore, for the seekers aspiring for the liberation, selflessness, humility, egolessness, etc. are very essential. Though knowledge is the prime cause for liberation, that knowledge comes through devotion only. Though a fruit is important, yet one should not forget that the fruit comes from the flower. The fruit of knowledge comes from the flower of devotion. If the knowledge soham has to come, then one should experience the devotion of God Soham, discarding egoism, rejecting self-esteem, having humility and obedience to God and elders, rejecting pride and pomp. When the heart becomes pure, the firm thought, I am Brahman, Soham, will become firm. The following words of Madhusudana Saraswati also reveal this fact only. I was first meditating on God with the thought, I am your servant. After some time, the son of Yadu, who played with the cohort damsel, stole away the first letter, Da, from Da Soham. So only Soham remained for me. That shows he gained knowledge through devotion only. Sri Krishna also expressed the same in Gita. Those who worship me with constant love to them, I impart knowledge and they will reach me through that. 10.10 10. The yoga of knowledge means discriminating Atman and Anatman. Bhagavan said that he would give it only to those having pure devotion. So pure devotion is the base for knowledge that is necessary for liberation. The basis for Soham is Dasoham. Without becoming perfection in Dasoham, one cannot get Soham. Realizing this great truth, acquiring devotion, having good character, humility, Obedience, attaining spiritual knowledge, people should become worthy of God's grace. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanai. Thank you, devotees. That concludes Seattle's contributions to this JNT celebrations. We would now like to request San Diego Satsang to take over. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanai.